piece. Um, may I ask, how long have you been working on this blueprint? Oh, um, a few months, I think. I'm not exactly Only a few months. Only a few months to memorize all of that and to put it in, into performance mode. Well, I think that's just it. It'd be more like five or six months now that I'm thinking about it. Okay. I think that's rather impressive. So, well done. And uh, one of the things I really want to commend you on in this particular movement of Mozart is your tempo control. I think that's actually really difficult in this, in Mozart in general, um, because oftentimes in his music, we have very co contrasting figurations and, and sections, and we're inclined to, oh, we have to maybe take time here, and then, oh, now it's more active there. So your ability to hold it all together, I think, is, is really good. And it's something that I, I think um, college level students uh, have great difficulty with sometimes. So, good. So what I feel um, this needs more of is something that's in the tempo marking. Could you tell the audience, what is the tempo marking? Um, Allegro con spirito. Good. And I think the really unique word here is spirito, right? With spirit. And so how can we bring that into the music? So I see that's actually already circled. So I'm going to circle, I'm going to underline it now. <laughs> <laughs> star, I put star, yeah. <laughs> so um, one of the things that I think can help make this come much more alive is the right hand, you know, prominence of the right hand. And uh, in this music, it's of course, you, there are some places where the left hand has some important details, but overall, I think the right hand needs a little bit more of a singing tone, even in 16th notes, even in running passages. That can be also, even though it's not a melody, it can also have a singing quality to it. So for example, oops, oh, take this run, for example, this is a high edge. Ah, yeah, even a simple scale. Can, can have a lot of musical value to it, uh, and, and shape and the So what I'm hearing, and it, it could be the piano's fault as well, this is not your uh, best starting way that uh, we have here, but uh, what often happens is this register, like, sort of center in the piano, you don't have to work very hard for it to pop out. And so you have to worry a little bit about the balance between your right and left hands. Um, uh, for example, sometimes uh, these come out a little uh, bit too much um, compared to So that's a, just an example. Um, you, you might have not even done that in this particular passage. But, uh, so let's see. I, I wrote also at the top here um, a couple words. So I wrote confidence, bold, uh, spirit, as we talked about, all of these words kind of to help inspire what this piece needs. And I also wrote plus elegance. So that's a sort of different side. Now actually, I find that you have much more of that side in that performance. You have a lot more of this sort of fine, uh, you know, these sorts of things. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's quite elegant. So, so we need to actually work on a little bit on the, um, I don't remember the, the actual notes, uh, the prominence of the melody here. Shall we try? Let's try. Hmm. I realize if I sit there, it's, it's strange. The sound is not coming where I, where I think it is. Let's try from once more. Ah, ah, it's starting to come alive. Um, just for now, let's try an exercise where uh, don't worry about sounding nice. Okay. Just, just uh, be the king. Yes. Right. Be, be even, it can even be mechanical. But let's see, what, what is the fullest extent that the right hand can really come out? Whoa! Okay, now you're sparking something. Good. Once more, try that once more. Good, good. And you have a natural 
sense of musicality to you. So, so it, actually, I think that is preventing it from actually sounding rough in any way. So I think this is good. Uh, the opening chord also. Let's let's um. Uh, what what is the purpose of the opening chord? There's no right answer. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what the purpose is. It's just like. It's just. What do you think it does? Um, <laughs> Why start with a, a fully voiced uh, major chord in, in the key rather than um, say like a, a single melody line? Yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a fine answer. Yeah, and, you know, you rope, you rope the listener in, right? So, and and uh, with even more simple uh, qualities such as volume and uh, thickness and and just the sheer impact, you know. So let's give that some orchestra power. Aha! Yes, and then then you have to show. A bit of a contrast, but still with the singing tone in the right hand. Watch your left hand in the... Uh, this is going to adorn, it's going to, to color the right hand here. Alright, let's continue. Sing this melody. Even though it may not be the loudest melody, you still have to play to the bottom of the keys. Kind of established a sort of fundamental approach, you know. Generally, a uh, singing, more singing right hand, uh, a more sort of confidence, like I own this music approach. Let's try it. I'll sit right here. Uh, maybe we can imagine that uh, 
pizzicato or something in, in string, a sort of plucking kind of action. Okay, let's let's try um, another passage. Oh, let's go to the second theme. Let's get into it. Maybe. Oh, actually, let's just continue. Let's hear the scales. So this is a place where you really get to show a bit of technique. <laughs> Thank you. 
wonderful <laughs> to have a teacher choose this piece. It's not that often performed. Um, most people, when they play the you know, of music, they, they often play the uh, uh, the danzas argentinas and, um, and the, the sweet, I forgot what it is. But, uh, so this one I, I don't hear as often, actually. So um, yeah, the, so the nice, the uh, fun thing about this is it really incorporates folk tunes, right? And it does it in such a way that there's a lot of sophistication behind it, and yet we still kind of, you know, can still hear it like like children. So, uh, yeah, I think sometimes I, I feel you are just a bit uh, serious uh, in your demeanor. Uh, not always in, in your, your playing. Sometimes you, you let loose in a, in a really great way that really makes this music work, especially the ending. I actually, I love your ending. You have this nice kind of like, I'm all in, I, I'm finally all into this. So that, that's the kind of approach, the attitude I need uh, from the beginning of the, the piece. Uh, it marks mezzo forte, and, and you started a little bit, uh, I want to say a little sleepy. Yeah, so, so I heard you do something like, you know, but, uh, uh, in recordings that I've heard of this, and uh, in one performance I remember, uh, it can be much more lively. You know, uh, I, it doesn't say staccato, but I think it's fine. <laughs> uh, and uh, there's a crescendo. And uh, also, I have my metronome here. He marks 138. And I feel that we are slightly under. We don't have to totally. Yup, bum, 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 bum. We don't have to totally match, but you feel that already uh, quite a bit of energy from that tempo, right? Right. Um, and go all the way to the forte. Yeah, let's try that. Yeah. Or or you can 
make this actually make this bottom G. It doesn't have to be caught in the pedal, but um, it has to sound uh, like there's a purpose behind it. So, so let's try it uh, again. Uh, a little bit of some 
five five finger positions, right? It's a very like simple piano, uh, a very simple piano concept. And then let me transform this into yeah, da, 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 like, like it's gonna go crazy. So um, let's let's show that. So it's, it's start simple.
your body into those last last chords. So, um, but we don't have, we don't have much more time. So I think I let's play let's play the ending. So let's play the last four bars. Tam ba ba. We have pesante, heavy. Tam ba ba ba. Tam, and then really show us every one of these. You can actually lean into the, the piano. Use your your the gravity to your advantage.
matured performance. And uh, you bring out the qualities of each one of these movements quite, quite convincingly, I think. So um, thank you for presenting this selection of Schumann's Kinderszene. And uh, I have a couple of notes uh, for each one. So we, we had uh, uh, five of these movements, I think. So uh, starting with the first one that you presented to us, uh, I think your tempo is actually pretty pretty spot on with the metronome marking, even though even though many people don't play that fast. <laughs> uh, But uh, what I want, what I was missing from this one, uh, do you, what is the title? Uh, the fireside. That's right. It's by the fireside. So what I, uh, you have to use a little bit of imagination here. Um, what does that really mean, by the fireside? And I, I, for me, I'm just thinking, you know, we're gathering around the warmth and and uh, having a good time. It's a nice gathering. And I, so what I'm thinking is, pretend like you're you're really telling a story. Uh, first, I went to went to the mall, and now I go to park. So, and then there's something interesting that caught my attention. I went to park deeper into the cave, and oh, it was just a rabbit. I know, I'm just making up stuff. <laughs> Hearing, hearing bits of the narrative, you know, I would hear, okay, this is one place and this is another place. Uh, just play, play once more. Great. Next, 
this one, remind me of the title of this one. This one I can't remember. Uh, Friday to Night. Friday to Night, uh, that's right. So it's interesting. He writes Friday to Night, and um, I think you can actually start a little bit more still. Watch, watch that, it's pianissimo, right? So watch that your sound isn't too out there. So, and then when you're here, you probably don't need much pedal to, to really, right?
resonate in wherever space you are. So that's all I have for this, and uh, well done. Thank you.